Welcome to day two of Michael Keaton month where I'll be reviewing all the movies that Michael Keaton has ever appeared in and today we kick this off in style the way it was meant to kick off with an actual movie. Yes, uh, yesterday's review of Rabbit Test, I I just apologise for that, I, you know, I apologise to myself for actually having to subject myself to watching that just to review it for you guys and um, yeah, I, that, that abomination of mankind just, just couldn't have annoyed me more and um, I'm just so glad we're out of the woods with <laughs> with re relation to that movie and mercifully we're now going to start this properly with Michael Keaton's first real film role you could even call Rabbit Test a film I've, I've been through that let's just leave it uh, this is his first uh, starring role actually in fact it's his first proper film role and it's his first starring role he jumped right in there and it's Night Shift from 1982 in fact it was released on the 30th of July 1982 and the tagline for the movie it was quite an interesting one, and um, I thought I would um, share it with you because uh, it's kind of funny because it's so bad. <laughs> it's ever since two enterprising young men turned the city morgue into a swinging business, people have been dying to get in. Yeah. Well, the plot of the film. Michael <laughs> um, Keaton starts as uh, stars. Sorry, as um, as Bill Blazowski. And Bill is just a crazy madcap character who just talks a mile a minute and has got all these ideas. He says he's an ideas man. He has a dictaphone he carries around with him and he just tells, you know, he speaks into it and, you know, uh, captures all his ideas that he has all the time. And he's introduced to the main character of the film, played by Henry Winkler of Happy Days fame. Uh, he played the Fonz, Fonzie, you should know who that is. And of course, the director of this film is Ron Howard, who was also starred in Happy Days. And this is, this is his first uh, major. Uh, Hollywood picture that he directed. Uh, so that's quite interesting. There's a Happy Days um, uh, reference there, relation there, sorry, and of course the writers of the film um, were involved somehow in Happy Days. I'm not quite sure how, but there's quite a kind of Happy Days reunion feel going on, going on about it, and the, the film was promoted as such. Um, but Henry Winkler plays a character called Chuck, and he works in the city morgue, and he's kind of a bit of a down on his luck, downtrodden kind of guy. He's got a fiance who you know, they, they, they're trying to kind of have a happy relationship, but there just doesn't seem to be something there. And um, he meets his character at the beginning of the film at the morgue. She's been brought in by the police, played by Shelley Long, who of course would go on to star in Cheers. She was just about to, to start Cheers, in fact, when she made this movie, so she wasn't quite as famous as she would later be when this film came out, or at least when she made it. And she plays a character called Belinda, and uh, she's a prostitute. And so Chuck meets Belinda early on, and then later on he, he realizes that she's um, his neighbor, which his wife isn't too <laughs> impressed with the fact that he knows a known prostitute in the area. When the film opens, we see these black guys, and uh, this is a very kind of shady kind of um, back street kind of scene, you know, uh, in the, uh, nighttime. Very 80s, you know, and uh, one of them's a pimp, and he gets, uh, gets knocked off. So now Belinda doesn't have a pimp to kind of, uh, you know, pimp her out basically for, for want of a better term and uh, so she's very concerned about you know safety and stuff and um, you know Chuck is is kind of he's being tempted by Belinda almost you know there's kind of a, a temptation there and will he won't he kind of thing my fiance Connie watched this film with me and she was very adamant that he shouldn't cheat on his fiance with this uh, uh, with this prostitute and it's strange in that in that regard, you know that the, really he he's not really holding back too much for uh, your main character. You know, it's kind of an interesting kind of move for a, a light eighties comedy. But I guess being a light eighties comedy, that you can't really take that kind of thing too seriously. Now he is paired up with Bill, who he's just met for the night shift at the morgue, and he's not happy about it. And Bill is just like constantly just talking again, as, as I said, Michael Keaton just, it's really kind of a coming out party for Michael Keaton. It's like, this is what you're going to see at Michael Keaton. Just crazy kind of, uh, you know, fast talking, frenetic kind of um, energy, uh, you know, a, a unique charisma. And it really just shines every kind of moment he's in the film. He's looking quite young in it, obviously, but um, you can really see where future performances would kind of evolve from and stuff. And uh, he's really probably at his most kind of crazy in there. Well, not crazy, but he's almost ADHD in this, you know, very fast talking. And, you know, he's brilliant in this film, absolutely brilliant. You know, for his first proper role, you cannot fault him at all. I thought Shelley Long was good. I thought Henry Winkler in particular was brilliant, really, because he really kind of just captured that kind of essence of someone who's really just oppressed by life, you know, and just really trying to just 
get himself out there a bit more and stand up for himself a bit, and that's kind of the you know the the thing with Bill him becoming uh, becoming friends with him eventually. They rub each other the wrong way to start off with, but they soon become friends. And the whole plot of the film is that uh, Chuck, who's feeling very kind of responsible for for Belinda's outcome, um, he gets persuaded by Bill to start up their own kind of um, prostitute ring <laughs> out of the city morgue. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And they become pimps, basically, or as Michael Keaton's character calls it, love brokers. <laughs> and uh, and that's the film, you know. And um, so there's you know the, the element of you know that they're going to get caught at some point. What's going to happen then? And Will he or won't he get together with Belinda? Will he leave his fiance? And you know, will, will Bill manage to kind of just stay in one piece? He's so crazy, but he kind of teaches, you know, uh, no, not uh, you know, very kind of, you know, this is how you you know um, let yourself loose. But just by process of being around him, Bill teaches um, Chuck to kind of uh, loosen up a bit, and uh, it's just great to see. And I thought Henry Winkler was fantastic in this movie. I thought the direction was quite good. Ron Howard, you know, was, would go on to make uh, some fantastic films, and this was certainly a very good one, but the writing here and the acting are the real standouts in this, because there's some amazing lines in the film. There's a great scene where um, Chuck speaks into Bill's uh, dictaphone, just tells him to shut up, and Bill gets offended, and he kind of goes off, and off camera we hear him just playing it over and over again, shut up, shut up. Chuck's feeling bad, so he kind of tries to find out where Bill is, and he <laughs> he's, in one, he's in one of the, the sliding trays where the corpses go, <laughs> just playing it over and over again. And uh, later on in the film, they're at a party, and it's Belinda, Chuck, and Bill, and they're sitting down, they've had a bit to drink, and Bill kind of opens up a bit and kind of strips back the facade of this kind of just, you know, jokey guy, and kind of uh, gives him a little insight into, you know, why he is the way he is by, you know, speaking about his parents briefly, and he gets quite emotional. It's a very short scene, but it just shows you again, it's really just a hint, a glimmer of what's to come with Michael Keaton, because... It was really kind of a, a, quite a moving moment in a film that's really kind of doesn't take itself too seriously, uh, especially in some of the kind of this a couple of fight scenes in the film as well, and um, yeah, it just showed you his range even starting back then. And it, it, it's I've always said it, guys who uh, actors who started out as comedians or comic actors often become some of the best dramatic actors. I don't know what it is, um, but someone once said, you know, if you can do comedy, you can do drama. Not necessarily the other way around, but you know, uh, that really showed for me, and I just thought this movie was really, really fun. My favorite moment of the film was when Bill, Michael Keaton's character, he jumps off this balcony to, to kind of tackle someone, and they move, and he just splats on the floor. Kind of very kind of um, slapstick, you know, didn't make me laugh or anything. But when uh, Chuck and Belinda they, they pull him up, they say, Bill, are you okay? He's like, Yeah, I'm okay. I must have cut my <laughs> must have caught an updraft. <laughs> It slayed me, absolutely slayed me when I first saw it. I had to rewind it back and just, <laughs> it was just a classic line. Must have caught an updraft. Um, absolutely brilliant. Love Night Shift. Couldn't recommend it uh, enough. Um, and I'm just going to end this by uh, giving you some quick trivia from the movie. Um, again, 1982 it came out and um, Ron Howard actually appears in the film. Brief cameo as an annoying saxophone player. Um, Henry Winkler's character can't say I love you. Uh, at the end of at the end of the movie, as he struggles with it, which is a nod to his character Fonzie, uh, Kurt Russell and Mickey Rourke were among the actors that auditioned for the character of Bill um, before Michael Keane was cast, and John Belushi was actually um, uh, the original kind of um, favorite. They asked him to do it, and he declined, and um, uh, he actually passed away during the production of this film. Sadly, um, there are also some early appearances from. Um, let me just get it right because I've forgotten. Kevin Costner and Shannon Doherty in non-speaking roles. So that's quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it for uh, trivia and stuff. Uh, you know, obviously again, just the reuniting of um, Happy Days alumni, I guess you could say. Uh, one of the few pictures in the early 1980s um, that uh, kind of featured a clean, clean cut guy becoming a pimp, <laughs> such as this one, Night Shift, Risky Business, Dr. Detroit and so on. So yeah, Night Shift, I loved it, and, I, and I'll be revisiting it for many, many years to come. Loved the movie. Great kind of uh, debut in a, in a major film for Michael Keaton. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review, and uh, there are many more to come throughout the whole of this month. We're going to get so deep into this Michael Keaton kind of um, 
filmography that um, you know you're all going to be sick of him by the end of this because there's a lot more to come. Let's uh, let's put it that way. Now the next movie we're going to be talking about tomorrow um, is going to be a movie that really kind of built on the success of Night Shift. You know, Michael Keaton really came out with that film and really got himself noticed as an actor, a comic actor. And so the next film was another big comedy in the 80s that he starred in. Then just catapulted him into the limelight and really showcased his skills. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow with another film. It'll be a double bill, the first of many, because that's the only one I'm going to be able to fit in his whole, whole filmog filmography. Is by doing double bills and reviewing multiple films, um, you know, in, on certain days. So tomorrow you'll be getting a double bill, and I won't tell you what the second one is, but um, it's quite interesting. So hope you check that out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bill, are you all right? Did you break anything, Bill? I caught an updraft.